What's up, my friend? My name is Andretti, I'll be reacting to how Teddy Roosevelt got shot and still did an 84-minute speech. Yeah. Before I go into that, can I ask you for one thing? If you could leave a like on this video, thank you so much for that, my friend. It's the best way to show support. If you can subscribe, oh man, in that case, forget about it. You make my day. Have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description. You guys end up recommending this one on Patreon. Let's take a look. Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th President of the United States, served his terms from 1901 to 1909. Okay. He didn't feel like two terms was enough for old Teddy. <laughs> Roosevelt would run again in 1912, this time on the third party Bull Moose ticket. Unfortunately. <laughs> no chance. So, no Republican Party, no Democratic Party, Moose Party? No chance. By the way, jokes aside, uh, Roosevelt is one of the best presidents ever, right? Because I believe he's in the Mount Rushmore. So, like people tend to say in sports, he's one of the goats, right? This guy is one of the Mooses. No, never mind. Definitely for Teddy, during one of his campaign stops in the Midwest, someone had a different plan. A lone gunman would attempt to assassinate old Teddy Bear. Today, we're looking at when Teddy Roosevelt was shot and still gave an 84-minute speech. But before we do okay, is this true, actually? <laughs> I mean, I believe it's true because I'm reacting to this, but uh, if you, if someone tells you this thing, and, uh, yeah, sure, sure he did. Do that, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below what I love this channel, by the way. you want us to cover next. Now, we're going to speak softly while okay. Teddy carries a big speech. Teddy Roosevelt looking <laughs> at that video and some photos seems like the, the typical guy that is always, uh, you know, not super happy, but he's the, the guy you need to, to run the country. A little after 8 p.m. on October 14th, 1912, Teddy Roosevelt left the Hotel Gilpatrick in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Roosevelt had okay. a jam-packed campaign schedule filled with speaking engagements in three different Midwest states. He was on his way to the final speech of the day, a real whopper clocking in at 50 pages at the Milwaukee Auditorium. With a tight 84-minute speech folded into the breast of his overcoat pocket next to a metal case for his glasses, Teddy made his way to his open-air vehicle, a thing that it would take far too many presidents to realize was not safe for presidential passage. Standing up in his car, Teddy waved to his supporters. Unfortunately, Teddy misjudged the room. While he saw a mass of big Roosevelt superfans, one person had different plans. That's when a single shot rang out. Okay, he was shot. The gunshot jolted the crowd. Roosevelt's would-be assassin was a Bavarian immigrant by the name of John Fleming Schrank, ex-saloon owner. Schrank was only four feet away from Roosevelt when he fired his 38 caliber revolver into the Rough Rider. Roosevelt allegedly brushed this bullet to the body off like it was a fly. His knees bent slightly from the gunshot, only to shortly resume tipping his hat to the supporters around him who did not just try to murder him. When his associate Henry Kotchems helpfully asked him if he had recently, like in the last second, been hit by a bullet, Roosevelt responded, He pinked me, Harry. Pinked, we're assuming, means hit because Teddy took a bullet. It only took... Wait, okay. Um, so, he got shot, but he's still okay, somehow. Okay, let's continue. Moments after Schrank fired his pistol for him to be detained, Roosevelt's stenographer, former football player Albert E. Martin, along with his former fellow Rough Rider, A.O. Gerard, sprung into action and lunged towards Roosevelt's attempted assassin. Martin's Rough Rider instincts served him well, going for the pistol while apprehending Schrank to prevent a second rogue shot. The dynamic duo were given immediate backup from several Milwaukee police officers, and together, this group of men overtook the shooter. The crowd of Roosevelt fans screamed for the assailant's death, like any good unhinged angry mob would. As the shouts increased for blood, Roosevelt attempted to settle everybody down. Don't hurt him. Bring him here to me, Roosevelt demanded. The officers then presented Shrank. <laughs> okay, I mean, wait, wait, what's going on? So the guy got shot. How are we? He's so calm. Roosevelt then. I mean, 
turned his attempted murderer over. I mean, if I get the flu, I'm I I, I think I'm I'm about to die. How is this guy got shot and he's chilling right there? Or to the police saying, officers, take charge of him and see that there is no harm done to him. As he examined the pistol, he took a moment to perform a little roast of his gun by saying, a 38 Colt has an ugly drive. After which one of his secretaries pointed out the bullet hole in Roosevelt's overcoat, to which Roosevelt replied, I know it. Roosevelt was now aware he had been injured and with the culprit apprehended, he could take a moment to assess things such as, have my lungs been punctured by this bullet? He opened his coat and all immediately noticed his shirt was covered in blood. Roosevelt- Wait, don't tell me please, he dies at the end of this story. That would be crazy. In the manliest of tests, tested his own internal bleeding by coughing into his hands to see if there was any blood. Thankfully, hey, okay. the cough was dry. Oh, Feeling that's good. confident that his bloodless hand meant a bulletless lung, Roosevelt insisted on continuing with his scheduled speech. Sure. Far be it for him to disappear. I mean, sure, no, 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 not sure, never mind. What what I am saying? Wait, what? <laughs> insisted on continuing with his scheduled speech. But she's is she <laughs> sorry, President. He is bleeding. Far be it for him to disappoint his fans. Roosevelt told his colleagues, I know I am good now. I don't know how long I may be. This may be my last cause to our people. And while I am good, I am going to drive to the hall and deliver my speech. All Dude, I would vote on this. He, look, I would vote for him 100%. If this guy can take a shot, oh no, this is my president. All of his campaign staffers implored Roosevelt not to give a long speech after being shot in the chest including his doctor, Scurry Terrell. Scurry was a throat specialist with an unfortunate first name that was kept on staff with old Rosie to make sure he didn't lose his voice while on the campaign trail. After they arrived at the Milwaukee Auditorium, two more doctors who were waiting for Roosevelt's speech were crowdsourced. The doctors told Roosevelt it was probably a bad idea to go on stage and give a speech yeah, after probably really bad. the chest, but Teddy would not be deterred. He took out a handkerchief, put it over the bullet hole, buttoned his shirt, and headed to the stage. Bad oh boy. ass. I mean, this is behind badass. This is superhero type of stuff. Harry Kotchums gave a riveting introduction for Roosevelt, while also managing expectations for the speech about to be given by a man recently blasted, telling the crowd, Ladies and gentlemen, I have something to tell you, and I hope you will receive it with calmness. Okay. As he left his hotel, a dastardly hand aimed a revolver at the colonel, and he will speak to you, though there is a bullet somewhere in his breast. Someone in the crowd, possibly a time traveler, shouted fake news, while others asked <laughs> more compassionately if he was hurt. Roosevelt used this as an opportunity to make a grand entrance, showing the surely horrified crowd his bloody coat and vest. He asked the now traumatized crowd to hush up and listen, saying, I don't know whether you fully understand that I have been shot, but it takes more than that to take down a bull moose. Okay, what's this fixation with moose? Um, but okay. Even though he promised the crowd he'd keep it tight due to the bullet possibly lodged into his chest, Roosevelt broke his promise and spoke to the crowd for a whopping 84 minutes. He acknowledged the length of the speech while also reminding the crowd that this very long speech they were subjected to also saved his life, saying, Fortunately, I had my manuscript, so you see, I was going to make a long speech. And friends, there's a bullet. There is where the bullet went through, and it probably saved the bullet from going through my heart. The bullet is in me now, but I will try my best. Roosevelt reminded the audience that despite the attempt on his life, his concerns were for them. As he spoke, Doctors stayed close on the ready for him to collapse at any moment. After 45 minutes, Teddy promised only 15 more while taking a sip of water. His doctors told him to stop talking, probably out of dire medical consequences, but all- I'm sorry, I have to put it. What the hell? <laughs> oh, man. Teddy Roosevelt may be my favorite president now. I said it. Also, perhaps it was a really long speech. Teddy responded, it is getting to be better and better as time goes by. 
Short of breath at times and with difficulty standing on his feet, the color began to drain from his face. This prompted one audience oh, member no. to ask the withering man to maybe sit down for a minute. He responded, I thank you, madam, but I don't mind a bit. History does not record whether this woman who spoke up was impressed by Roosevelt or had her feelings hurt because he didn't take her advice. As he read his speech, he dropped each page to the ground, giving a glimpse of the bullet holes in the pages of his speech to those with good seats in the front, in case they also wanted to scream out suggestions or complaints. This is so crazy. Roosevelt wasn't insane. He, of course, eventually made his way to an actual hospital after his epic speech wrapped up. It was there at Johnston Emergency Hospital in Milwaukee that doctors discovered, despite being covered up with a handkerchief, that Teddy had given all 84 minutes of his speech with a hole in his chest the size of a dime. His wound was cleaned and bandaged twice for good measure before he was sent up to the operating room. Physician Dr. Joseph Colt Bloodgood, an ominous and I think good name for a doctor, joined doctors R.G. Sale and T.A. Stratton in tending to Roosevelt. One of the nurses apologized without authorization on behalf of the entire city of Milwaukee. Roosevelt assured her everything was chill between him and Cream City. <laughs> yeah, it's actually one of the nicknames of Milwaukee. Cream City. Okay. Roosevelt knew his long-winded speech probably saved his life and prevented the bullet from causing further damage to his body. But not to be outdone, the humble, steel-enforced case for his glasses probably did some of the heavy lifting in keeping the bullet from penetrating all of his organs. That, along with his thick suspenders and large overcoat. Practically everything he carried in war helped to stop the bullet. But it was the addition of the 50-page speech, doubled over in his breast pocket, that rendered Roosevelt practically bulletproof in the spot in which he was shot. If not That's for this amazing. collection of thick items surrounding Roosevelt's vital organs, the gun used in the shooting, if fired at point blank, would have certainly killed him. Yeah. A fact he gladly kept reminding his audience of during his long speech, that the very meaty speech probably saved the bullet from going into his heart. <laughs> okay, um... Needless to say, it's rare that one is in their right mind when running around firing guns at former presidents. But in Shrank's case, it was emphatically true. When he was apprehended, authorities found a letter in his possession that was all the evidence they needed, aside from the many, many witnesses. Shrank traveled from New York City to murder Roosevelt because of a dream he had in which President William McKinley sat up in his coffin and pointed to a man he dream recognized as Teddy Roosevelt, and McKinley said, This is my murderer. Avenge my death. Shrank awoke what? and did the only logical thing of taking this dream verbatim and avenging the death of President William McKinley, a man whose death yeah, was that no guy's crazy. caused by Theodore Roosevelt. With this dream journal, Shrank was assessed and found to be experiencing insane delusions and was found unfit to stand trial. He was committed to the Central State Hospital for Criminally Insane in Wapen, Wisconsin, where he mm. remained until he died in 1943. Roosevelt's Bull Moose Party ultimately lost the 1912 election after splitting the Republican vote and handing the presidency over to Democrat Woodrow Wilson. But the bullet in his chest would remain comfortably in Teddy's body forever. The doctors at Johnston Emergency Hospital, after much debate, determined via X-ray the bullet alongside Teddy's fourth rib was too dangerous to operate on and remove. Quite a souvenir to have. But that's Teddy Roosevelt, a true rough rider. So what do you think? Was there anyone as tough okay. as Teddy? Well, my friends, this was crazy. Can we all agree with that? This was crazy. But uh, kind of amazing to know these stories are, uh, are actually real. And look, like people tend to say, they don't make presents, presidents like this one nowadays. Right, my friends? Um, yeah. Don't forget to leave a like. See you guys next time. Bye.